Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Range Report. This week, we're gonna go over how all my gear worked while I was hunting in the freezing cold weather. Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Range Report. Today we're going to go over all the gear that I took hunting with me last week and how it worked out in the extreme cold. Now for me, being from Texas, 10 degrees is pretty cold. Uh, I went and hunted in southeast Kansas last week and I spent a majority of the morning and evenings out hunting. Uh, the temperatures were between 9 and 20 degrees and it got pretty cold. Uh, most of my gear held up fine. A couple of things I did have issues with and uh, a couple of those things I'm trying to work out. As far as keeping warm, I had never hunted out in, in temperatures that cold before, so I took with me what I thought would work best. As you can see, I have a lot of stuff laid out. Uh, the pants that I put on for my camo pants were the Sika 90% pants. The Sika 90% pants are really designed, they say, for 90% of what you do. So extreme colds or extreme, or you know, the warmer weather, it's not really what they're, you know, not their intended purpose but you can layer underneath them so when it got down to nine degrees and I got up at 5 30 that morning to go hunting I knew that I was going to need just a little more to keep my legs warm what I did was I wore my under armor uh, leg or leggings uh, base layer and I, I just had a pair of Nike sweatpants that I put under them as well and, and, and everything still fit well the sick of pants they really uh, they really stretch and flex and just they're they're great pants absolutely so my my legs and stuff are warm I didn't have any issues there as far as with my uh, feet now I'm I'm always one to have my feet get cold first I had my Danner my Danner boots which have Gore-Tex but they are uninsulated and I had two pairs of socks on uh, a light wool pair from Cabela's and a heavy wool pair from Cabela's now my feet still got cold I feel like that next year I'll probably want to go ahead and invest in a pair of insulated boots or maybe an insulated liner as just by nature I'm going to get cold especially down on my feet. For my upper body I wore uh, two Under Armour shirts actually an Under Armour and a Nike shirt and those were uh, you know like the warm weather gear and then I wore a, a lightweight North Face fleece over that and then I wore the Sika Stratus jacket. Now the Sika Stratus jacket is made to stop wind and keep heat in yet still allow still allows it to breathe uh, it was a great jacket I never felt any wind come up or through me or anything like that and my my upper body was definitely warm now for gloves I just had the very lightweight sick of gloves and some thinsolent mossy oak camo gloves that I picked up from the local Walmart there most of the days my hands did okay but that's where you're gonna get cold first and for me my hands were almost unbearable when I shot my deer. I, it was just, it was getting to the point where I couldn't stand it anymore. They were just shaking. I, I, I was I was prone. I was not, unable to get them tucked in someplace. So as far as clothing goes, I think next year, the only two things that I would change is I would get a really thick set of gloves that can keep my hands warm, and I would get an insulated set of boots. Just moving on with stuff I have up here next to me, we'll take a look at my, these are my binoculars. And these are also my range finders. These are the Bushnell Fusion Mile. Uh, they have the art technology and they are 12 power. 12 power is a little much for scanning a field when you're hunting, but the majority of the use that I get out of these is for ranging things at it, it, it far distances and, I, and that's why I like having that extra power. Uh, these were easy to use with my gloves on. The uh, operation worked fine. The battery didn't seem to drain. 
there was absolutely no problem. So that was definitely a plus with them. They they work the whole time. They work great. I actually really recommend these. It's the, the Fusion Mile is different than the 1600 Arc that they had the year before. I'm not sure how much different the laser is, although they claim an extra 150 yards of ranging capabilities. But the glass, in my opinion, was what was upgraded. Next up was my Kestrel. My Kestrel is the applied ballistics version. I've been using it for a few months now. You might have seen my video where we did an overview of how this product works. This is great. This is something that I always have with me whenever I go shooting. It helps with wind, it helps with uh, humidity, and it gives you all your ballistic calculations. I had no issues with this either. The I did notice that the battery started to drain. Now, with lithium batteries, you don't always get a good uh, indication of when your battery is going to go dead. It usually says 100% the whole time, and then all of a sudden it starts to drain. So once I got out there in that extreme cold, I noticed that it dipped down to 78, and then 68, and then 58. So I went ahead, and that next day I changed them, but it did last throughout the hunt. Uh, once again, as far as gloves, this was really easy to use with thick gloves on. I was surprised. I thought that I would have problems with the with the buttons here, but I actually had no issues whatsoever, and it, and it worked perfectly. It started up. It didn't slow the screen didn't dim uh, once you start getting out in those real cold temperatures you realize that not everything works according to plan next we have my pistol i took my dan wesson 1911 with me it's a uh, chambered in 45 acp now i didn't have a chance to use it in the field but i did notice something else that was on it that i used in the field and that was my frog lube uh, I, I i picked up frog lube a while back to give it a, a little test with a 19 with i'm sorry with a fmp 45 tactical that i was using it fared really well. The it seems to do a really good job of lubrication, except for when it gets extremely cold. Now, when I was racking the slide back a little bit to do a chamber check, when I let go, it really dragged on its way down. And is that going to hamper the operation of my firearm? I'm not sure, but it's definitely not making it more slick, where things run more, or, or things move more smoothly. Also, I noticed the same thing when I chambered a, a round into my 6.5 Creedmoor here. It really just seemed to drag. I had a lot of friction. I, I think I have a little video saved. I'll try and put it up if I do, of just me trying to cycle the bolt. It, you know, it not giving me too much friction to close, but it definitely wasn't that real slick back and forth that I usually have with it. When I um, ejected the round after I harvested my deer, I noticed that it was difficult to pull back and difficult to push forward. So that was definitely... Definitely something I want to look into. I think we're going to try and put some frog lube on this 1911, stick it in the freezer, and see if I can get those repeatable results. Again, this was 10 degree weather, and I was out there from 5 until 8 in the morning. Now moving on to one other thing I took with me. I wasn't sure if I would see, uh, maybe see a deer that was in close, and I, I would actually had a pack on that I was carrying this with me, so I, I carried my AAC Micro 7 in 300 Blackout. I carried this out there with me, just slung. And on it lives basically my uh, Silencer Co. Osprey. I, I really like this gun. I like it a lot. Um, it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's super quiet. It's, it's pretty accurate. It's a, it's a cool little gun. Well, I had been laying prone for a couple hours, and I, I had saw some dough that I, I was considering harvesting, and I thought, well, maybe I'll just take them with the blackout. So I reached over, I grabbed the blackout, pulled it up, got the optic in my sight, and flipped it off safe. I wasn't completely on target, but I was in the general vicinity. I was actually still pointing down. When I flipped it off safe, it fired into the ground. Uh, that made me pretty nervous, obviously. That isn't something that you would expect to happen. So obviously I threw it, I ejected the round, pushed the next round down, closed the bolt, put it back on safe, so now it was empty. Set the gun to the side. Obviously, there was an issue that I couldn't work on right then, so I just wanted to, to get the rifle in a, the most safe position I could have it, which would be unloaded. Uh, about 15 minutes later, I went ahead and harvested the deer with my 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, luckily, when this thing did fire, uh, misfire, it was suppressed, and the deer were none the wiser. So <laughs> if it's going to happen with any gun, at least it happened with this. Harvest the deer. I went and I got the deer checked out, made sure everything was okay. And I was like, well, it's going to take a couple minutes before I get the truck over here. I'm going to mess with this here real quick, see what the deal is. So I took another live round 
and with pointing straight into the ground, I loaded a, loaded the I loaded a rifle. I'm sorry, I loaded around into the chamber and flipped it on the safe. I didn't do anything else. Then I looked straight down the ground, popped it off safe, and pop it went again. Now one thing I noticed was that once it got a little warmer, I wasn't able to get it to repeat that, and I haven't been able to get it to repeat since. Now, I uh, I spoke with Brent from AAC, and he asked me to immediately to send it back. So they're going to send me an RMA, I think, and we're going to send it in to take a look at it. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe it was just, maybe could have been the frog loop. I don't know. Maybe it was gunking up and it held something in place. I spoke with Aaron Roberts of RP Rifles. He's the gunsmith that works on all my guns, and he said, you know, from time to time, stuff like that can happen. You can get dirt, debris, etc. You know, a safety is a mechanical safety, and all all things mechanical can fail, and they will fail at one point. So, you know, I thought maybe we just take it and have it cleaned and, and have it looked at, and it might, you know, just be fine from them. But I think first I'm going to go ahead and send it into AAC and have them take a look at it, versus it just going back to Remington. I think in the end that I'll end up switching out the trigger anyway. All of my uh, other rifles carry uh, Timney Jewel Looper triggers, so it, it'll probably get that replacement anyway. I uh, I really hope though that that there isn't something majorly wrong. I mean, it's a Mark X Pro trigger, and I know that Remington has had uh, kind of a spotty past with um, supposedly guns going off when they're not supposed to. I'm not sure I've always believed all those claims, but I know for sure that. I didn't have my finger on the trigger and then I tested it again and it failed again. Now there could have been something in there that made that happen and it, it could be due to my negligence and not keeping it clean, but I, I really haven't got this rifle that dirty. Um, other than that, that's about all I took out there. The, uh, the Leopold, I'm sorry, let me definitely speak to that. So last year I took my uh, Bushnell HDMR and that was before I had the quick view switch lever on there. And I remember when I went to uh, to zoom in, it was really hard for me to get that ring to turn uh, on the zoom ring. And I've had that issue with other rifles before. Now the, the turrets and everything work fine, but when it gets really cold, sometimes those things get a little hard to move. Not one issue here. Now first, this has this big grip on your zoom ring here, or a big big surface area to grab. But the, you know that made it super simple. The turrets are easy to grab with big gloves, and the locking turrets are easy to use with big gloves. It worked uh, flawlessly. Everything else on this rifle here worked great. It has a, a jewel trigger, had no issues there. I, I shot the deer with a 130 grain Burger BLD, and I was using a load of 44 grains of H4350, and I chronographed that load at 3,000 feet per second, 29,995, or 29,995, and it was smoking. You know, it, I took a high shoulder shot on the deer, and it took it straight down. So that performed flawlessly. That was really great. That doesn't really have much to do with the cold weather, but in all that was, you know, part of what made that hunt a success. So definitely if you're going to go out and hunt and, and you have an opportunity to uh, test your gear when it gets really cold, make sure and do that. Uh, I didn't really seem to have anything major other than this could have been something major, but you know, just some little things that I noticed. Definitely the frog loop is something I want to do some more testing on. I was really surprised at how uh, gooey it got. And um, then, you know, you definitely want to make sure that all your batteries are fresh. Um, and that, I mean, honestly, that's about it. You know, I definitely, like I said, for next year, I'm going to get some more insulation in my boots. And I'm going to get some thicker gloves. And hopefully I'll go out there and be able to stand that cold weather again. Let me know in the comments or uh, leave us a reply if you guys have had any issues when it got extremely cold or extremely wet. I'm sorry, extreme, even extremely wet. If there were any adverse conditions that made your firearm or your gear react differently, let us know. If we can, we'll try and test some more gear in different conditions. Thanks for watching.